Hello, I'm Beast. <laughs> and I'm Belle. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 8. Hard to say anything. And yes, I'm actually Lux. And really Ember, <laughs> like you guys didn't already know. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we suddenly conjured magical creatures out of nowhere. So as you can tell, we saw a certain theme in this episode. Yes, uh, I made Lux pause at the moment that I saw the admirer ponies because I'm like, could we hammer it home a little harder? Her name's Sugar Bell. It's a quiet town. It's a tiny village. And Sweetie Bell was reading the book of fairy tales. I didn't get that second connection until... Just now and just before the recording at the same time. Kind of like that scene at the end of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, where the kid goes, French class? Yeah, yeah, now you get it. <laughs> so yeah, she, we actually paused it long enough for her to go and read the wiki. And we came back and watched the rest of the episode. Yes, because Lux had an interesting theory about it the point that we paused. Because at the time, she seemed to have a fancy for both of them. So I thought she may be manipulating things to get what she wants because at the beginning of the episode she kind of, in a way, offhandedly mentions that she could use a larger shelving unit in such a way that I was like, is she obviously hinting at Big Mac that, you know, it would be wonderful if you got me a larger shelving unit, you know, because you love me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I was wrong. She's a nice pony. I like her. And surprisingly, he's also a nice pony. The guy who flips his hair. Yes, Feather is actually a nice guy. He's just socially awkward. But not in the shy way that Big Mac is. He's like, I can do flamboy, I can do performance, but actually talking with some pony? No, 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 no. Though at one point it seemed like he actually knew exactly what Big Mac was doing and kept trying to one-up him at every turn. But at the start of it, it didn't feel like he knew what Big Mac was doing. He just happened to be courting the same woman. Yes. When he first showed up with the flowers, it didn't feel like it was deliberate. But everything after that felt deliberate. Also, what the hey is wrong with the Cutie Mark Crusaders? They haven't acted like this since they got their Cutie Marks. Yeah, they got a big dose of dumb. Because they should know from experience that that particular plan wouldn't have worked. They now have several clients worth of experience that should have told them that simplest is usually the best answer. Yeah, and that staging something like that is a bad idea. Also, so you guys decided to manufacture danger. So you deliberately broke the law by stealing from some pony so that you can make Big Mac look good. Can we go back a step and why did Big Mac agree to that? He seemed hesitant, and I think he was still hesitant until he was like, okay, I'm committed to this. Kind of like, afterwards, he went, yeah. No! <laughs> well, when they put him in that outfit, I figured they were going the whole troubadour route. That he was going to serenade her then. Not be creeping up on a sleeping girl to try and steal a kiss. It's not romantic, that's creepy as all heck. Mm -hmm. Like that list we found. Because I recognized a reference at the end of this episode, and I was like, what? I know that's from an 80s movie. That was a romantic comedy. And we found a list of, what was it, like 20 creepy, 25. 25 creepy things you shouldn't do to impress a girl or something like that. Uh-huh, all from movies. And I was skimming it really, really quickly because I was just looking for the movie that Lux was referencing, which of course was number 25. Of course. Say anything. Just like in the title of this episode. Yes. And the reference I'm referencing is at the very end where he holds up a record player as if it was a boombox. Though when they started talking about the singing, I was like, hey, that's the thing Big Mac can do. You know he can do that because he's sung before. Yeah, that's why I was expecting it to be while she was asleep that he would wake her with a serenade. Because we know Big Mac's a good singer because he's part of the Ponytones. Mm-hmm. But they didn't come up with that until after the creepy kissy incident. Yes, but knowing Big Mac's personal strengths, 
I would have gone for singing way before I would have gone for trying to steal a kiss. Yeah, but we're talking about the mismanaged Cutie Mark Crusaders here. They weren't thinking in their right minds, obviously. Obviously. Because they didn't come up with go with your strengths until the end where it's like, do something she'll like. Yeah, yeah. Um, Duh. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course. Though there were many great expressions in this episode. Yeah, the animations were very expressive and... I'm very happy for a Big Mac's voice actor. This is probably the most he's ever been paid. <laughs> yeah, at least this season. He's had some talkies and some other episodes. Like, I do declare! <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for Apple Bloom in that episode. Mm -hmm. And some of the jokes were nice, like, Can I get a tour of the town? Yeah, there it is. It's one street. <laughs> That's all there is to it. What was it like? The... No, it wasn't the donut, but it was like, something has landed. Cupcake. Cupcake has landed. That was cute, too. Also, I did like the singing until it became an epic rap battle. Yes, because both of them were doing reasonably well until we had the forcibly pushing each other back and forth. And it's like, do you not see in Sugar Bell's body language that you guys are both losing severely right now? Mm-hmm. She went from enjoying Big Mac to... Dude, what the heck? And then both of them just kept pressing it and pressing it, and then you guys made a mess of her shop. And I'm sorry, there's nobody in the town that could have helped her build a larger display case? When Starlight ran the town, everyone worked together to build the new houses for the newest inductees. So obviously there's ponies there with some building experience. Obviously. But Big Mac has a special sun pony now that he actually likes. Everyone thought that would be Marble Pie. Yeah, because Pinky was kind of pushing them together at her swarming. And of course, even more thought that it would be Big Mac and Cheerilee, because even after they were cured from the love poison, they were exploring the possibility a little bit. Yeah, I think that was more of like, hey fans, we're heading back to this. Also, they're just good friends. No, no, really, shippers. They're just good friends. Stop, stop writing that. Oh my god. Also, Big Mac was definitely very classic country songs, and Feather something, I can't remember his full name, was definitely very boys band teen songs. Yes, and going through several different iterations of the different types of boy band teen songs. Hmm. They didn't catch it. There were several different variations in there. You're not a girl. <laughs> yeah, so? Well, basically parodies more of the different song types because you had ones that were more focused on one singer and then you had ones where that main singer was heavily backed up by their backup singers. And then you had the ones where they were more equal, but I'm still the leader. Also, him hopping on those flowers was actually pretty cute. Yeah, especially the animation during the songs was rather nice, too. Especially when they, like, kind of cut over to actually what was going on in the songs. Like you said, the flower hopping and some other stuff that was going on with Big Mac and stuff like that. It was very nice. Because mm -hmm. we had, you know, the actual scenery and then it got over into kind of the fantasy section of, yes, we're really walking along. Just, like, looking around, like, why do I suddenly have this bonnet? That the set and the framework was a nice callback to the CMC episode where they were in the talent show. Because that's what started this nonsense, was the box of their talent show supplies. And they decided they were going to take those and go be spies. Because Big Mac was making too many deliveries to Starlight's old village. Though, that does bring up the nice point that they have opened up trading with that town. So that's kind of nice. I also, right at the end, when the Cutie Mark Crusaders were like, Hey, we can help you. Yeah, we can help you. I'd be like, 10 bits, please. <laughs> of course, Ember kind of smiled and laughed at, not my joke, the hair flipping. Yes, because the CMC were totally copying him on that. Well, that's how he found out he was actually kind of a nice guy. Not like Gaston, who he was supposed to be um, referencing. Gaston, no matter what, is a bad guy throughout that entire movie. Yeah, but he has his moments because he's basically, if you put it as like a high school setting, he's 
the high school jock. He's the top football star. Everyone admires him. He's used to being the best at everything. And until Belle turns him down, he's still like, okay, guys, quit picking. Come on. She's just different, but she's beautiful. It's okay. <laughs> Don't pick on her. <laughs> and let's not forget that from Gaston's point of view, the Beast has been holding Belle prisoner all this time, which is true. Yes. Let's not forget that both of them kidnapped her father to manipulate her. Yes. And actually, Beast didn't kidnap her father to manipulate her. He just kidnapped her father because her father wanted into the wrong house. Yes. It was simple trespassing, but he still took the trade. Yeah. I love how he jumped into Beauty and the Beast and this right here. Which kind of works because the episode was kind of modeled around that, but hey. Very heavily. I mean, look at the design of his admirer ponies. You have all three of the girls right there. I thought all three of the girls looked very similar to each other. Yeah, they do. Same, he same hair color, I believe, in the movie, but these had different hair colors. Yes, different hair colors, but they had the coloring themes of the three girls. Hmm. So they reflected the colors in the mane and body colors instead of the dresses. Leave it to the Disney expert to point that out. Yes, because the three girls, one wears green, one wears red, and one wears blue. And then you have the three. One who had more green, one who had more red, and one who had more blue. And I originally thought that she wanted me to pause it because she automatically saw where it was going and it was going to be cringy like I did. No, it was because like, oh, it was going to be cringy and it's Beauty and the Beast themed. Yes. So it was kind of a double whammy. So I'm like, ah, so many ways this could go because this automatically makes Big Mac... The Beast, which makes the Cutie Mark Crusaders, Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts. Though none of them had the sense of a teacup. <laughs> Though Sweetie Belle did sound like Chip. Little bit. And in the earlier episode, she even squeaked like him. Ah, uh, come on, people found it adorable. So anything else you want to go over on this episode? Like, oh, probably a ton of nitpicks that we've already gone over some of, but there's probably more. Yeah. How could Big Mac not notice that those three were hitching a ride? The additional weight of three more fillies should have made a difference. Also, a difference in the way the load felt. Living weight versus inert weight. Especially with the fact that when they jumped onto the back of the wagon, it bounced a little bit every time they got on. And considering that he's walking in front of the wagon, he would be aware of any ruts in the road before the wagon hit them. And since he's been making this trip so often, I'm pretty sure he knows every pothole along the way. Though bringing that up, he could have not noticed it because he's gotten used to all the bumps in the road. He could also have been distracted by, oh, I can't wait to get there. Possible. So, more? Almost always, because we pretty much started straight with... The village stuff and all the Beauty and the Beast stuff, so we hadn't really... Scootaloo's line of, there's no way a spy could close a case this quickly. There's more to it than that. Yeah, and how many spies do you know? That's not important right now. I also like, that line actually worked? Yeah, because he's saying it like a total boy band. Pretend that he's several times and that you're Mabel. So did you notice that Sweetie Belle was starting to fall for him too? A little bit, because classic boy band, which is apparently what all girls are supposed to fall for. Apparently. I was never much into boy bands. I know I'm a guy. I know of a lot of guys who like boy bands, too. Sorry, my favorite boy band is this little one called The Beatles. It's a classic boy band. One of the first big ones, I believe. Though they did have this wonderful thing called a four-part harmony. Mm-hmm. So, apparently... Feather also wasn't that into her because he was like, okay, I lost. Yeah, I was going to bring that up, especially when, like, so what were you trying to accomplish? Yeah, because you say you're so socially awkward outside of all those things you were doing. So what were you going to do when... When you won. <laughs> yeah. Keep up the gallant gestures and never have a quiet conversation. Also, Sugarbell's pretty fast to forgive Big Mac and to declare that she likes him too. Pretty sure all that nose touching counts as kissing. 
Yeah, I think she already liked him before. She was just upset with him after the whole big gestures. Because, like, if you really knew me, you would know that this kind of grand gesture doesn't work. But this kind of grand gesture does, like building you a whole new display case. Mm -hmm. But if grand gestures like that aren't her thing, then why was Feather making headway? Probably because she found him cute. I mean, he is a boy band. True, but still. Hmm. There's always plot holes in these stories. So, yeah, it just seems a little quick that, okay, not only do I instantly forgive you, I also choose you. Even though it was obvious in the beginning of the episode that she liked him. But it was kind of like, oh, that escalated quickly. I think she's been hoping and waiting for him to say something. That's why she also reacted positively to the beginning of his song. Because it was nice and it wasn't over the top. Mm -hmm. And then when things got over the top, especially when they destroyed her shop. Yeah. I don't think of any other references I saw in the episode. Let's see. The big ones were Beauty and the Beast, Say Anything. There's probably some other romantic comedies in there somewhere. Well, if you take Sugar Bell's kind of self-awareness of seeing herself in the scene when she's walking with Big Mac and wearing the bonnet, that kind of ties back to that one part in Hairspray where they have the song, I Hear the Bells. Hmm. And her friend is like seeing only part of the scene and Tracy's having this whole fantasy thing of we brushed hands and now we're getting married. Oh yeah, still need to finish watching that. I haven't seen all of it myself. Yeah, not a well there are some musicals that play around here, but not a lot and not super close. But I do like the musical scene. Mm -hmm. Well overall it was a fun episode, a little cringy here and there. I know I was like, ooh, at a couple of moments. I mean, Ember probably looked over and saw me covering up my eyes going, I don't know! <laughs> was a nice episode. It's just hard for me to see the characters regress when this series has been so good overall about characters keeping character growth. To see the CMC acting like their silly blank flank selves instead of the professional helpers that they actually are. Mm-hmm. I think it really boils down to the fact that they have multiple writers on this show. And each writer basically have to go from an outline of the characters to write the script from. And they're usually writing them in parallel, so they don't always have a chance to go over and talk to someone else who has more experience writing the characters than they do. Yeah, it's just unfortunate because we could have had this episode with the CMC as their current selves, and it still would have played out well. Because their advice could still be off the mark. It just wouldn't have been quite so ridiculous. Also. It could have been a non-CMC episode. Big Mac was in an entirely different town. We had an entire town's worth of people on the whole one street to draw from that could have been involved. They could have either helped or hindered him. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 8. Hard to say anything. Thanks for listening. Usual YouTuber request. Like, subscribe, share, comment. We have playlists. Can't decide what to watch? Click a playlist. We can take care of some of your free time for you. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, and bleh, Facebook. Also, if you really like it, he does take commissions. Would you like to support this channel financially? We are listed on Patreon and Ko-fi. Okay, technically Lux is listed, but it's kind of same thing.